Let us pray. O oh God, who by the passion of Christ, your Son, our Lord, abolished the dead inherited from ancient sin, by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to him, we have been born by the law of nature, the image of man on earth. So by the sanctification of grace, we may be at the image of the man of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We shall now listen to the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him so stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. As one smitten by God, he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us holy. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have taught him any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sins of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoke no falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. But because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall beat. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who was unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similar, similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the day when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who would obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its cover. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Anas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. 
So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the, gate with, was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I say to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again. Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged, and the soldiers wove a crone, crown out of thorns and placed it on his head, and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. 
And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have the law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and <clears throat> went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him, so Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king who opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the, in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out. Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took, <clears throat> took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had the inscription written, and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did, standing by the cross of Jesus, where his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and wife of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. Now bowing his head, he handed over the Spirit.
Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came <clears throat> and broke the legs of the first and then the other, the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had come, first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloe, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this glorious day, I offer you this meditation for your reflection. It is as we celebrate our Lord's Passion on this penitential day, our fasting from food and drink, from unnecessary chatter, we all can step back and reflect and silence of all of our mind, heart, and soul, of every fiber of our being on what Jesus encountered on Good Friday. And perhaps we may ask this question, what is so good about Good Friday? The crucifixion of Jesus, his death at Calvary, the sacrifice he made, the price he paid, the pain that he endured, and the utter suffering he went through, the shedding of his blood, the dying of a gruesome death like a criminal upon the cross who did nothing wrong and everything right according to his Father's divine plan. Therefore, what is so good about Good Friday? Well, what's so good about it is that on that wood of the cross hung Jesus, the Savior of the world, the Son who was totally obedient to his Father. And it was not easy for him, it was downright hard. And Jesus, in his moment of agony, he even cried out, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? But he added, Not my will, but thy will be done. What an incredible amount of trust Jesus the Son had in his Father. As horrifying as the suffering and death of Jesus was, 
It was part of the Father's plan, part of God's plan, in order that the people might be saved from their sins. And in his suffering, Jesus had mercy on the cross. He showed tremendous love. He even said in respect to those putting him to death, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And to the good thief that said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus also spoke these two words, I thirst. This refers back to Psalm 69 when he said, Look, what I am doing now was written centuries ago. It is part of God's plan that was set in place long ago. What an incredible amount of trust Jesus the Son had in his Father. And when Jesus said these three words, it is finished. He meant precisely this, that he paid the debt owed by man to his creator on account of Adam's sin and disobedience to the Father. Jesus paid that debt forever with his own precious blood. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, let us treasure these last seven words of Jesus to the Father. He says, And to your hands I commend my spirit. He put his life into the hands of his Father. As we continue throughout this tritium, in the approach of celebrating our Lord's resurrection, let us learn from Jesus and do likewise. No matter what we're going through in this life that God has given to each and every one of us, let us pray, Father, into your hands we commend our spirit with faith and the Father's divine plan, recognizing at all times and all places and under every circumstance of our life, we are to put our trust in God. No matter what we're going through, he will get us through, just as he did his son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord our God, and our all. Amen. Amen. We shall now say the solemn intercessions to conclude the first part of our liturgy of today. For the Holy Church. <clears throat> Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord <clears throat> be pleased to give her peace to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, <clears throat> leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever 
living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations. Watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Pope. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe, unharmed for the Lord's church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people who govern by your, by you, dear maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For all <clears throat> orders and degrees of the faithful, let us pray also for our bishop, Bishop Coyne, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. For catechumens, let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts, and unlock the gates of his mercy, that, having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the unity of Christians, let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, 
that those whom our baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the body of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Jewish people, let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants. Graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Grant this through Christ our Lord. For those who do not believe in Christ, let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before with you a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love, and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, May be made more perfect witnesses to the Lord, to your love in the world. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you, and by finding you come to rest. Grant we pray that despite every handful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and the Father of our human race. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in public office, let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of all peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority of our Lord that throughout the whole world the prosperity of the peoples 
the assurance of peace and the freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, <clears throat> dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and the salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in, a tri in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in the hour of need. Your mercy was at hand. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For an end to the pandemic, let us pray, dearly beloved, for a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that our God and Father will heal the sick Strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, health, and healing, Look with compassion on our world, brought low by disease. Protect us in the midst of the great challenges that assail us. And in your fatherly providence, grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, and success to those working to eradicate this discourage. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we be seated. That we are done with the first part of our celebration of the Good Friday. We shall now start the second part which is the veneration of the cross. The priests and the deacon will go behind the church, at the back of the church, to bring the cross that is veiled. We shall lift the cross three times, one at the back of the church, the second one at the middle of the church, and the third one right in front of the altar here. At each point, we shall chant, Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. And we all, and those in our homes, will respond, Come, let us adore. For those of you who are viewing us from your homes, you can grab any cross in your home and adore with us, as we adore Jesus, who out of love died on the cross to save us all. Thank you.
The third part of our celebration is the Holy Communion. We also invite those of us who are viewing us from their homes to continue to join us and to be part of this continued celebration of the freedom. Although you may not be present to receive the communion here, but know it that we are with you, praying for you, for the spirit in our souls, with our whole mind, and we remember the love of God that unites us through the blessed sacrament, the food of the angels given to us by Jesus himself that gives us nourishment and strength. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We wish, we wish to thank all of you at home who joined us in this service of Good Friday. And we thank all those who participate with us here we thank God for your lives. The love of God continues to unite us and to urge us in everything we do. But the celebration of today give us more strength in walking in the presence of God. And may this celebration by the stripes of Jesus, may all those who have one disease or the other especially those affected by the coronavirus, have their healing. After this celebration, after the closing blessings, we shall all depart in silence. But before you go, ensure that you genuflect before the cross of Jesus. There is no greater love for one to lay his life down for his friends. May God bless all of us. Bow down for the blessing.
May abundant blessings, O oh Lord, we pray, descend upon your people, whom you have honored, who whom who have honored the death of your son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen.